Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the biggest WCW killer of them all? Why, it's you, Vince Russo, and kinda Jim Herod and Eric Bischoff, too, damn it. Woo! Take out your CW and add in a few O's, because Ric Flair is hitting some truth bombs. We thought we heard the last of WCW, but apparently it's only part two of a part four docuseries that's coming out here, and chaos has erupted. And it just shows you, WCW is more fucking relevant in 2024 than any wrestling going today. It's been dead for 23 years, but still we talk about it. Still, the question remains, who actually killed WCW? You know, depending on who you ask, there will be different answers. A lot of people seem to blame Vince Russo. He's been the one, I think, probably the one name over the year that always pops up when asked who killed WCW. And that is who Ric Flair believes done it. Although he doesn't think it was a solo job, he thinks it was a three-man team, a three-man mission with a combination of Vince Russo, Eric Bischoff, and Jim Hare. But before we talk about what Ric Flair... Actually, you know what? Let's just go into what Ric Flair said, then we'll say, then we'll give our opinion because I disagree with Ric Flair. I think he's losing it in old age and... You know, I think Ric Flair just needs to go away. I'm not going to say he needs to die like WCW, but I think he needs to change his life around and sort himself out. No, he does need to do that, but let's see what his comments said here. And he said, I've tried to lay low on this, but let's face it, who killed WCW? It's a free-headed monster. Jim Heard, Eric Bischoff, and Vince Russo. There's no individual wrestler or faction that caused anything to kill WCW. It was the people in charge that created dysfunction, aminosity, and tried to divide and conquer by lying to everyone and involving themselves in the promotion, which was the ultimate failure. God, I could give you a thousand more examples. I want to live through all three nightmares and to be saved by the WWE. Thank you to the WWE for bringing someone who was dead in the water as a result of these three people back to life. End of quote. Right, I, I want to just address this, right? He's kind of painting them all as if, like, Jim Herd had something to do with 2001. The error he's on about with Jim Herd was between 88 and 91 when he got fired, and I'm sorry, that's irrelevant when it comes to who killed WCW. Yeah, also, he, he talks about these guys putting themselves onto the show and it somehow killed the show. Wasn't Eric Bischoff on the show pretty much every week for the 83 weeks that WCW was kicking WWF's arse? Yeah, he was, but I want to just go back to Jim Heard. It's like, that happened like, I mean, 10 years prior to WCW officially going out of business. Yes, Jim Heard, a lot of people didn't like what he did in those three years, right? But see, after he quit, or whatever happened to him, I'm not too sure, I don't know the details, right? The company got built up, like you said, Hogan came in, the 83 weeks thing happened. I think once that happens, pretty much all the bad that Jim Heard has done can't it, be accounted for. You can, I don't think you can still hold it against him. Plus, let's talk a little bit about Vince Russo. You can say he killed it, but really, by the time he came in, WCW was on the way down and WWF was on the way up. Yeah, the writing was on the wall. I mean, they, they brought Vince Russo in for that reason, that they kind of needed something because they were losing the battle. So it's not like WCW were in a great position, healthy position. Vince Russo comes in, then all of a sudden they start at tanking and WWF takes a lead. WWF were already beginning to win this war. You can talk about who killed WCW. Do you want to blame it on anyone? I'd, I'd blame it on Austin. Cause I, I think it was <laughs> I think it was WWF just improving that killed WCW. Yeah, and what you've got to say is, is it, the attitude era essentially turned the tide. Vince McMahon. Yeah, killed. so we can talk about who killed WCW, essentially, I think it was the people involved in WWF because they were the ones that pretty much won the war and then McMahon put the final nail in the coffin. But what I would say is... But if WWF continued to stink the joint out, then WCW would have been all right. WCW would have been thriving. See, Vince Russo, I, I, I'm not going to say no blame completely, right? But... I, I look at Vince Russo and I think if he didn't go to WCW, I just think it would have been a bit more blander. I don't think there would be all these crazy forklift matches, you know, 20,000 fake hits of the world title. I just don't see how it would have been kept alive if Vince Russo didn't go. I think Vince Russo's period in WCW is underrated. It was entertaining. Now, obviously, people quit, right? And maybe if Russo doesn't go, you don't get like the bash at the beach incident, maybe the radicals re-sign, I'm looking at things like that, but at the end of the day is, I mean, 
I just think it delays the inevitable. Maybe they make it to mid-2001 instead of the fucking first third. Is there a difference? I don't think so. It's, anyway. all, it's all of butts maybes at the end of the day. Russo replied to Ric Flair. He says, look, looks like Ric Flair nature boy is hitting the rum candy again. Thanks for giving me that much credit for a writer to take down a multi-million dollar company through words on a page. I guess I really was special. Not my fault you weren't in the dock, Rick. Sorry, man. I hope you don't think my excessive use of your son, David, and the rest of your family, for that matter, who were all great, by the way, wasn't the knife that drew the company's last blood. Yeah, I failed at laying low, too. End of quote. So that was Russo's first reply to Ric Flair. Uh, Ric Flair wasn't done there, though. He replied to Russo saying, quote, Woo. Glad you got back to me at Finstra. So whatever candy I'm eating, at least I can afford to eat, which I'm not sure you can. I would give you 20k, Eric Bischoff 20k, and Jim Jim Hale $20,000 a piece wired in advance to show up in Tampa or Atlanta. I'll rent the venue in Tampa or Atlanta. It will sell it for sure so we can hash this out. And I guarantee that I can probably sell this to a pay-per-view status because I'm Ric Flair, and you're not story of my life, end of quote. I mean, this is kind of sad. Who is Ric Flair trying to kid? 20, do- 20 grand here, 20... He's just going to He's gonna wire 60 grand to three people that he claims to hate, three people that he claims to kill WCW. Ric fucking Flair, the guy that is... How many times this guy fails for bankruptcy? How many wives is he paying money to? Uh, this guy will do anything for a, a, a check, a dollar. He, he's desperate, yet he's pretending he's got money, um, you know, coming out his fucking ears. I would bet that... I think Eric Bischoff would have a healthier bank account than Ric Flair. I would bet on that too. Uh, I look at this and I just think, right, I know he's not... Eric s- Bischoff's comfortable. He owns, like, his ranch and his horses, and I think Bischoff would have money. No, I think he would too, but I look at Flair here. He's not exactly said that he's going to fight these three, but... Well, that's pretty much what it is. He's... Yeah, he wants to hash it out. Let, let's just put this into some context. Well, hold on. Here. He's hardly putting on a paper for you to talk. Well, that's what I'm saying, but, you know, he's not, he's not exactly... It's not 100% guaranteed here he wants to batter off three of them, but let's I, look... I think Bischoff would batter Ric Flair. Yeah, well, let's talk about right. Russell Don't Bischoff. know about Jim Heard. All right, well, let's, that's what I was going to get to. Jim Heard is 85 years old, Right? I know, I know he might have did Flair wrong and fired him back in 91. Flair, it's 2024, son. I'm saying son like he's not 50 years older than me. I Plus, Vince is a big guy. And he's only... I'm talking about Jim Heard here. Yeah, I know, but let's just take Jim Heard out of the equation because he, he, he'd be lucky even to make it to the ring. Um, that 20k might be for his I'm throat. not convinced that Ric Flair in a fight beats Bischoff or Vince Russo. Vince a pretty big guy. And they're a lot younger than Flair. Well, yeah. especially Russo, isn't he? I'd say he's probably about 10 years, 15 years. I'm not too sure. Anyway, Russo then followed back up and replied to Ric Flair. He says, bro, I never thought I'd be saying this to the GOAT, but you need to work on those comebacks. No hard feelings, Rick, just really disappointment. Part of me giving David the greatest push in his career was because, one, he deserved it. He was a great human being, extremely underrated, with a pair of boots, but put before him that were impossible to fill. Two, I also did it because of my admiration for you. Throughout my entire life, I've never forgotten those who tried to help or kind and encourage my kids. Ask Billy Corgan, but I guess that's the difference between you and I. Our priorities in life were, are, and will always be totally different. My priority was never pro wrestling. It was always my family. I sincerely apologize for making your life a living hell. I didn't realize I did that until today. When we were working together, you gave me no indication of that. At the end of the day, I was just trying to do my job. I guess nobody's perfect. What I said today, I've been wanting to say for the last 25 years. Truth is that I would have went to my grave with it if Rick didn't wake up this morning and decide to take a public shot at me. I'm glad he did. Now it's off my chest. End of quote. So... I mean, I think Russo here, he's coming off better than Flair. I mean, he's almost taking digs at Ric Flair here, saying that his priority was his family and not pro wrestling. And then you look at Ric Flair and his situation with his family, his kids, his estranged wife. So, I mean, you've got that. And I don't know, Ric Flair's... 
Ric Flair's comeback is basically, I've more money than you, 20 grand here, 20 grand there. That just comes across as pathetic, especially when he's probably not got more money than Bischoff. I'd say he's definitely got more money than uh, Russo, no doubt about it. But see, that, this is two things in a row. We've seen it with Bischoff, right, where he said Brett didn't voice anything towards him. And we're seeing it here with Russo saying that Flair didn't voice anything towards him. It's like, we don't know what happened behind the scenes. But, like, how much are you willing to bet that Brett and Flair, and there's a lot of other guys, that were getting paid and didn't give a fuck how it was going down? And yeah, now, but- 25 years later, they, they can just... Pe- pe- pop Take their the- responsibility and just be like, no. ass. Like, someone I respect is Sting, right? He went, he, he went down with the ship, and then he can go to WWE, and is he, he's never come and fucking said a bad word about anybody. But that kind of shows you the person, in my opinion, that Sting is. Steve, Steve Borden. Steve Borden is. And then you look at the kind of person, like, see Ric Flair as a performer? I think the guy's great, right? And see when he's got a bit of drink in him, he, he can be funny, but he does strike me as a pathetic man. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> No, but he does. Like, he's I, funny. No, no, but no he, I agree, yeah. Like, Ric Flair just... He strikes me as an asshole. Yeah, like, these guys can... I mean, obviously, Brett wasn't really WCW. Flair is. It, it, I think... I genuinely think that Flair could have done something. If, 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 if he can talk the talk, he can walk the walk. I think this is just a guy who's happy enough to get paid. And also, Vince Russell's being generous here, trying to talk up Ric Flair's son. David fucking sucked. Saying how talented he was. He was a talentless hack. No, yeah, he was very... Uh, un- who was only getting a push because... Rick, I have, well, I mean, Vince Russell says it right here. He pushed him because of his admiration for you. Yeah. And, and I think that's the goddamn truth. David Flair doesn't have that second name. And there's no way he's getting all that screen time that he got in WCW. So, um, yeah, no, look, you can say why about Vince Russell. But you never see anything, you never, see, you've never really heard anything for Flair. Like, if you think it's, like, you always think of, like, Bash at the Beach and Hogan grabbing the mic and be like, that's why this company's in the place it is, because of people like you. <laughs> but you never hear that for Flair. It's almost like Flair was just too pissed. Because I think Flair was just happy to take the paychecks, kiss ass. He comes across as this guy that, oh, I- I'll speak up, I'll do this. I think he's a fucking brown noser to the max. No, I and then as soon as he, he can't use you anymore, he dumps you. Well, I don't. I think Hogan's the opposite. I don't think Hogan is a brown noser. I think no, Hogan, but people would Hogan's talk to, a brown noser for himself. I but people would people would say, oh, I Hogan is. I don't think so. I think Hogan's got a backbone, and his back might not be working. Maybe he's got no bones left in his back. But I do think he's got a backbone when it comes to standing up for himself. Yeah, it's like say you want about Hogan. I mean, he actually called out Russo on fucking pay per view. I live. I you know, Flair's doing it twenty five years later, and, and Russo's saying, "But why didn't you do it?" In my face, sort of thing. And I've just never seen Rick. I've never seen Hogan come out and make tweets like this. Every time Rick Flair makes a tweet, like it's very fucking cringe. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's essentially calling three guys out. Here, oh, I would say, talking or fighting, I tune in. You tune in. I'd be there. Give Rick Flair. Tell you what, see all this talk about that. I'm fucking tempted to watch it. The clusterfuck is WCW at the end. Yep, can't wait. We, I think we'll review it. Monday Night Wars, Attitude Era. Who wants those reviews on the channel? Fuck, fuck, the, fuck, fuck the Attitude Era. I'm all about the WCW. WCW, yeah, man. The Nightmare Run. Anyway, that's The only thing I would agree with Flair is I don't think one person killed it. No faction. I, I, I just think it, it's everyone. I think Ric Flair and I, Bret Hart... I'll tell you what, I think Ric Flair's performances during that period were so shite that he should take a, a part of the blame as well. Guy yeah, was atrocious. I, I just think it's a collective unit of all these guys that came in and just accept all these like guaranteed contracts. And yeah, it's not their fault for taking the money, right? But it's like... Yeah. Yeah, well, the guys in WWF were fighting for their lives and the guys in WCW were like, ah, well, win, lose, or draw, we're getting paid, so... Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those contracts didn't run out to, you know... Nah, later. After, after WCW's well dead. And so. they were still taking the money off Ted Turner, weren't they? So, so there you go. That kind of sums it up there. Well, anyway, I, Ric Flair, fucking loser. No, he is a loser. I, I'm losing respect for the guy. By each passing day. Aye, I think it would just be better if he retired for social media. Didn't say it. But look, no wonder people say, well, why can't WWE use him? Why can't he be a... No wonder WWE don't put this guy, especially the direction they're trying to go... Co- putting Ric Flair on TV is like fucking putting Sexy Red on TV. You know you know she's going to twerk and just make a fucking absolute slut of herself and then you know Ric Flair, you wouldn't be surprised if he does the same. Work. I mean, I wouldn't put anything Blank. past Ric Flair. 
Yeah, Rick Flair, guys. Probably do a helicopter spin live on Raw. I'll be interested to see what Eric Bischoff says. He responded to Brett. Will he respond to Rick? Till next time. Peace.